VW Caddy in this week, um, this is in for a full system upgrade. Discussed the system with the customer, went back and forth over a few options and we decided that the Audison Prima range is going to be best suited for this installation. Um, customer's goal is sound quality, that's really what he wants to achieve out of the system. So it's a non-intrusive install, none of the equipment's going to be on show, it's all going to be hidden away, um, just really pushing the sound quality. I'll be fitting the Audison Prima tweeters, uh, six and a half inch woofers, the eight inch sub and an amplifier which has got a DSP built into it. So we also have access to uh, time alignment, equalization, uh, crossover points because it's a fully active system. So all in all, it's gonna be a really solid system. I'll also be fitting a doubled in stereo which has got Apple CarPlay built in. So alongside the uh, system itself, it's gonna have added functionality within the vehicle. Uh, you know, maps, music apps, uh, Siri, so all in all, it's going to be a massive upgrade for this customer. The front doors are going to have sound treatment um, using 3mm skins. We get full coverage on those. Um, be adding wave diffusers as well. I'll be mounting the 8-inch sub under the driver's seat and I'll be putting the amplifier under the passenger seat as well. Like I said, just everything completely out of sight, just really pushing the sound quality of the install. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the door stripped down, um, take the door cards off, remove the original speakers and get those prepped ready for sound treatment. So the doors are stripped, uh, ready for sound treatment. I just need to wipe the panels down with some IPA. I've removed the original speaker. <clears throat> this was riveted on. So what I've done, I've just drilled those out, removed the speaker. That's given me access to this area of the door skin. So now I should be able to get full coverage of the three mil skins sound treatment on the outer skin. Uh, I'll be applying it to the inner skin as well. The other thing I need to do is make a speaker adapter for our six and a half inch woofer. What I'm going to do with this adapter, if uh, the door card allows it, is to get it as close to the grill as I can, just so the sound's coming directly into the cabin and it's not getting lost behind the door card itself. And I also want to um, put an angle on it, try to get it as on axis as possible, firing up to the listening position. So if we can get the speaker performing to its absolute best naturally, then when it comes to the tuning process, we've really got a good base to work off. But now just need to um, wipe these down, apply the sound treatment and get this made. Speaker adapters are done, they're assembled, ready to be fitted. Sound treatment is done, apart from this area, I'll finish that once the adapter's on. You've got full coverage on the outer skin, full coverage on the inner skin. Uh, I've added threaded rivets to the existing holes. I prefer using these over a nut and bolt, 
it's just a lot more straightforward. You don't have to mess about with the nut around the back and getting a spanner in there. Um, and also when it comes to putting it back to stock, if that ever comes, it's just gonna make that straightforward as well. Next thing I need to do is take a signal from the original wiring. Uh, I won't ever put the plug off. I'll just tap into the original uh, wires, run that back into the aftermarket speaker. On the back of the adapter, I have accounted for these threaded rivets because they do sit on top of the door skin. So I've countersunk the area around the holes and just gonna allow the adapter to sit completely flat, make sure there's a, a good seal there. Doors are all finished up, uh, speakers mounted to the angled adapter. I've taken my signal from the original wiring, routed that back, um, routed that back through the boot, tapped off it here, taped it up, and I've just made sure that the original plug isn't touching the door panel and it's sitting against this rubber boot just to eliminate any rattles. Um, next thing I need to do is take a look at the tweeters, make them out for those and then start wiring the system together. So I've just taken the tweeter grill off, had a look at the mount, and turns out it's exactly the same as a VW T6. Uh, this is fortunate for me because I've already got this design on the computer. It is to fit an Audison Voce tweeter, so all I've had to do is just tweak it a little bit, just so it will fit uh, an Audison Prima. They have just finished printing. <coughs> so I'll get them fitted in a minute. Um, the original grill doesn't actually have a tweeter, so this is good for me because the original fixings aren't disturbed. So normally from the factory, you'd find the tweeter sitting in there over these three pins uh, and then the ends of the pins would be pressed and heated. So that would lock it into place. But for me, I'm going to slot my adapter over, do exactly the same thing. That's basically going to leave me with a really good OEM fix. So the adapters are done. I've got the three holes that will go over the pins on the tweeter grill. I've set them down slightly so I've got enough of the pin sticking out to melt, to lock it into position. This should be just a pressure fit for the tweeter into the mount. And then from there, should just be able to slot this over the pins. So now once I apply heat to these pins, melt them, it'll lock everything into position. It'll be a nice secure OEM fixture. Need a soldering iron. And just melt the plastic. So that's now locked that into place. This is how it would be done in the factory and how you'd find it if there was a tweeter already. So I'm just going to melt the other two and then this will be ready to fit. So I'm really pleased with how these have turned out. It's a nice, clean installation. It's great that we've been able to use the factory pins to secure it into place. I haven't had to use any hot glue or make a mess of anything. So they're just gonna go straight in. Uh, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna put the stereo in, sort all the wiring out. Not really gonna film much of that because 
be a bit boring to be honest so I'll get that done and then once I've finished all that I'll be moving on to the amplifier and the sub. So the stereo's fitted, the wiring's done for that, the signal cables will run back to where the amp's going to be, uh, the USB extension for the Apple CarPlay. Um, I didn't want to run that to the glove box or a cubby because that's going to be used on a daily basis I'd imagine with, um, with the Apple CarPlay. So um, what I wanted to do is have a bit more of an OEM finish to it. Uh, there is an original USB port down the bottom. I've just unassembled the original plug um, and I'm going to fit the aftermarket plug into that. So <clears throat> this is the um, original. I've unclipped it. I'm not going to clip it back together because it's a nightmare to get apart. But So that would sit through this. <clears throat> and then this would sit into the tray. So all I've done is I've taken it apart. I've stripped back the casing on the aftermarket plug. So now that's going to fit within there. Although the aftermarket plug is smaller than this, so it was was loose, had some play in it. So what I've done, I've just 3D printed this little spacer. That just sits inside there. And all that's going to do is just take up the slack and make sure it's nice and firm and doesn't move about when you when you're plugging it in and pulling the plug out. So uh, I've taped the original loom to the aftermarket one just in case, because as soon as we feed that back down, we don't want that getting lost. So, but with doing it like this, like with everything in this, this install, try and keep in mind that one day it might have to go back to stock and just whoever does that, if it's me or another shop, it's just going to be a lot more straightforward for them and it's just peace of mind for the customer as well that they're not going to buy replacement parts when it comes to putting it back to factory. It's just a nice, easy process for them. I'm just taking the seat out and just taking a look at the area that I'm going to be putting the amp, which is down here. <clears throat> okay, it's got a leisure battery under this seat and while I'm here I'm going to be sorting some of this wiring out, tie that into the amplifier's wiring. To fix the amp down I'm going to be putting a base uh, in that area. So what I'll do, I'll put some sound treatment down and um, glue two pads to that with some grab adhesive and then fix the amplifier's base to those pads. I prefer doing it that way rather than screwing into the actual bodywork itself. Um, I mean, if anyone's ever tried to rip up sound treatment that's been applied properly, it doesn't just fall off, it, you know, it does hold well to the panel. So uh, I prefer to do that as a sort of a semi-permanent fixture. And when it comes to taking all the equipment out, There'll be no, absolutely no trace that the amplifier's ever been fitted there. So what I'm going to do now is just crack on with that, uh, get the base cut, and then just run power on ground. Signal cables are already here, and then get some sound out of it.
the Amrax done. Pretty pleased with it. Pretty simple, but nice and clean. This uh, wiring passed through. That's something I've been wanting to do for a good while, but never really had the application on uh, previous jobs. So I just thought I'd do it on this and yeah, it's gonna look good when it's fitted into the, uh, into the van. These are the screws for the pads that I was on about that uh, will be glued to the sound treatment that's on the bodywork of the van. So I've screwed them into here first. I'm gonna, then I'll put some grab adhesive on the bottom of them while they're on this. Offer that into the van, position it up, wait for that to cure. And then they'll be in exactly the position I want them to be in. There's no guesswork with trying to drill holes through and you know, it's just gonna, gonna go straight in, line up perfectly. Uh, the carpet as well is, uh, I've matched that to the same carpet that's in the back of the van. The, the rear of the van's been lined out, so that matches nicely. It's just going to look really clean. So I'm going to go fit this now, just a bit of wiring to do, mount the sub and then good to go, start tuning it. system's done, it's fully set up and tuned, uh, the amp's in, sub's in. I didn't really see any point in filming me sitting there on a laptop setting the system up. Um, you know, this video is really focused on the installation itself and, and my process during an installation. It's something the customer doesn't really get to see, you know, they drop the vehicle off, come collect it and it looks pretty much the same. Obviously you've got the audible difference of the system itself. It's just something I wanted to go through and you know, show you show you how I tend to tackle things, and you know, I've got a very particular way of working. Um, sometimes it works against me. You know, my own worst enemy with creating more work for myself. But at the end of the day, if if I can see that something could be improved on during an installation, then I, I tend to do it. Something I tend to do for myself as well. You know, I I enjoy a challenge. I enjoy knowing that something's been done to the best it can be done you know, the, to the best of my ability. And not only from a, a standpoint of, you know, trying to get the best out of the system, it's also about, you know, thinking forward. So you, you take a look at something and you think, well, how can I do that the right way that when it comes to taking it out, you know, if, if it does ever need to come out, how hard is what I do going to be to reverse? It's not just about the day that they pay me and they're gone and then forget about it. I try and Think of it as if I'm looking after the customer long term. You know, he's still got my equipment and it's still my job, you know, until it's undone or sold on or whatever, it's still that job is linked to that vehicle. So I think there's a certain level that customers expect and that they should get, you know, a standard. We'll be doing some more videos. Uh, you know, it is difficult with, with just me doing the installation and filming as well. You know, I put equally I enjoy both. So if you wouldn't mind doing all the usual YouTube stuff. Uh, like, subscribe, share, hit the bell notification thing, um, get notified of more videos I put up. Uh, you know, I have enjoyed this and I hope you've enjoyed, enjoyed watching it.